Alright everyone, so Boxing Genius TV once again and today we'll be watching one of my favorite fighters so before Lomachenko and before a lot of the other fighters that y'all probably watch a lot you know there was a fighter by the name of Orlando Canizales who actually had one of the best footwork in boxing you know one of the most unorthodox ones and you'll see a lot of his techniques are very similar to Lomachenko so Man, a lot of y'all don't know about this fighter, so I kind of want to talk about him today. So to start off, we'll be doing or we'll be studying his in and out footwork and how he does it so well. So here you'll see him actually using the in and out to fake his shot and to bait some reactions from his opponent. So in this uh, particular clip, particular clip, he'll be using his in and out to fake a shot and then his opponent does not react so watch what he does he goes one he goes two he goes three and then he throws a right hand so he goes in he fakes that he goes out he goes in again he fakes that he goes in and then he throws the right hand after he sees that there's no reaction from his opponent here's the second one again he'll fake his entry once and then there once he fakes his entry, he sees that uh, his opponent is actually reacting by throwing a jab to keep him at a distance. And so what he does is, he fakes that entry again, and then he slips to the left. He slips and then he throws a right hand counter. All right, so you see how he uses that in and out footwork to force his opponent to uh, throw some shots and react. He throws some jabs here, and then he times it, he slips, he throws a right hand. Now we'll be looking at his pressure now, applying pressure by using evasive steps. And here you'll see him do that, exactly that. So why are, evas why are evasive steps so useful? Number one, like I said, it puts pressure on your opponent. It cuts off the ring. And number two, it just fakes your entry a little bit more. So watch it here. So you do that a little He'll do that evasive step over there and so he cuts off the left side of the ring. He cuts off the left side of the ring. You know, there he goes. He moves to the side a little bit and that's what you call an evasive step. He takes that right foot, he puts himself in a squared stance and then he cuts off the ring. And there you see his opponent backing off. He's not really doing anything there. He just does that evasive step to fake his entry and also to cut off the ring at the same time. And again, he'll do that here. You see how he moves to the side, he takes that right foot and then he moves to the side while ducking. You see his opponent backing up, right? And so that's exactly what the evasive step does. Number one, it cuts off the ring, you know, and number two, it fakes her entry. He does it again there. You see that? And this is the last one. Again, he does the same thing here. He puts himself in a squared stance, he ducks under, and then he does that evasive step to cut off the ring. So you can see by doing that, when he moved, he actually uh, was able to cut off the ring on the left side of your screen or on the right side of your screen, left side of the ring. So by doing that, he was, ab he was able to uh, stop his opponent from moving to the left side of the ring. He was able to move there and cut off the ring, apply pressure. Now we'll be talking about the pendulum step. So watch his left foot here. As you guys know, pendulum step is basically you hop and then you put yourself in the stance, okay? And then you do that constantly. If you don't know it, watch it on YouTube. So here, he'll, take, he'll do that pendulum step. He'll take that left foot back. So, sorry, I keep pausing. So here he takes that left foot back and now you can see him in a squared stance. Once he goes back to his orthodox stance, what he'll do here is he'll actually throw a right hand. So y'all see that? He does that pendulum step. Once he goes back to his orthodox stance, he throws a right hand. Now, why is that so useful? Because when you're doing the pendulum step, your opponent has a tendency has a tendency to think that you're just resting. You're using that time to rest. So when you're doing this pendulum step, most of the time your 
taking some time to rest. Most of the time that's a sign that you're tired when you start uh, doing the pendulum step. And so your opponent gets cut off guard when you actually throw off of that. So he goes back to his orthodox stance and then he throws the right hand. Here he'll do the same thing again. He'll do the pendulum step. Now when you do this, your opponent has a tendency to think that you're tired, okay? That you're resting. But when you go back to your orthodox stance, you can take advantage of that and you can throw your own shot. So here he goes back to his orthodox stance and he uses that um, pendulum step as a deceiver. So his opponent got deceived and his opponent thought that he was resting when he was doing that. And so once he goes back to his orthodox stance, he throws a jab very quickly. And his opponent got caught off guard by um, that pendulum step. And then he'll, he'll do it again, but he'll do a jab to the body, okay? So watch how he does that pendulum step. And then he goes back to his, to his orthodox stance and he actually throws a jab to the body very quick. It's, it's a very deceptive. Now, if you th try this out in sparring, you'll see how quick it is and how your opponent gets caught off guard. I don't know, but for some reason, when you do this, when you start doing this pendulum step, your opponent has a tendency to think that you're tired or you're resting or you're retreating somehow you're running away, but you can take advantage of that and you can come back to your orthodox stance and throw your shot. And also, it actually gives you some momentum forward. So, if you see what he does here, once he does that pendulum step, he has some forward momentum on his side because once you take that left foot forward, you know, that could uh, give you some momentum. And so when you throw your jab, it's actually much more powerful. And we'll see now a technique used by Lomachenko today, but Orlando Canizales used it much earlier, which is the shifting, okay? This is basically when you put your weight on one side and then you shift to one direction. So I'll break down here. All right, so when he ducks under here, what he does is he squares up, okay? He squares up and he puts his weight on his right leg. Once he puts his weight on his right leg, he will use that momentum to take a side step and then he shifts and then he throws that hook. So see it for yourself. He'll square up here. He'll duck under. He squares up. He leans his head to the right. All right, see that? He leans his head to the right. And so by leaning your head to the right, you're shifting your weight to the right side as well. And you can use this momentum to shift rightwards. So here he shifts. He changes direction. And then his opponent gets caught off guard, he throws a hook. All right. See the same thing here? And if you see Lomachenko do this, he usually does it, but he's in a southpaw stance. So it's kind of weird. You know, he's in a southpaw stance, but he's shifting on the right side. Most of the time, southpaws, when they do this, they do it on the left side because it's much quicker. And, you know, just the nature of the stance itself, most of the time, they just like to shift more on to the left rather than on the right because it's easier to square up when you're in the southpaw stance you know and so here he'll do again the same thing and i'll break it down here he squares up right so you can see that he's still in, a, in an orthodox stance but his body is actually squared up you see that he's squared up and then he'll lean over to the right shifting his weight from both from the front leg over to the right leg and then he uses that right leg as a pushing force and then he shifts so he lean over to the right and then he does that shift now if you're planning to do this on the left side what you'll do is you'll lean over to your left side and then you'll use that momentum from your left leg to shift to the left so that's uh, kind of what you do so he leans over there to the right, he squares up. So two steps, you square up and number two, whatever direction you're going, you're gonna lean over to that direction and you're gonna transfer your weight on that leg. So if you're moving, if you're shifting to the left, your weight should be on your left leg. If you're shifting to the right, like what Canizales normally does, you're gonna lean over to your right side. So here he slips a jab and then, like I said, he uses that momentum from slipping to the right. And so his weight is now on the right leg and then he squares up and then he shifts. All right, y'all see that? He uses the momentum right here 
by leaning over to the right. Now his weight is on his right leg and then he squares up and then he does a little side step right there. So see it for yourself, that's what he does. Boom, uses that momentum from his right leg and then he shifts to the right. Now if you're a southpaw most of the time, you know, Lomachenko does this either side. That's why I'm really amazed, you know, how he does it in a southpaw stance, but he's able to shift to the right because it's tough. It's tough to do that. And when he does it, he usually, uh, actually, he usually shifts from a southpaw to a orthodox. So that's what you do. If you plan on doing this on to the left side as an orthodox fighter, you're going to have to shift from a orthodox stance from an orthodox stance to a southpaw stance when you're shifting on the right side it's much easier as an orthodox fighter so that was it hopefully you enjoyed this video subscribe if you're new and i'll see you guys soon